This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to put their head down and press through. No. The Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done. He showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me again today on Preach Your Voice, Not an Echo. I think this is message two, and I'm going to continue on. As I said before, I do load up the prayers, not all of them, but I got quite a few of them on the prayer list for you, those of you who like to hear them. But when I have multiple messages, I may not begin prayer with all of them, so definitely tune in, because I know some of you like to hear them, but that is the very reason why I made uh, the pray, uh, prayer list, because some of you like to hear the prayers. And uh, because you said really help, and that's the way the Spirit taught me to pray, to pray scripture. Uh, for you are, pray, you are praying the principles of the word. And when you pray the principles, which is the word of God, that is what the angels hearken to. So when you pray like that, you then ask the Lord uh, and, and, and say the scripture on what the word speaks concerning the fact that the angels hearken unto the voice of the word of God. There are angels that excel in the strength that do your commands hearkening unto the voice of the word of God. So they are hearkening unto that. That is a principle that you can apply and you decree that word in your life and in your prayer and the angels will war against everything that is in opposition to that word in your life. They will war against any uh, person, place, or thing, or action. That's why I tell you to pray. Uh, even when you send forth word, um, and you ask the Lord for instruction, you bind up and you dismantle and you cast out every lie that came as a person, every lie that came as a place, every lie that came as a thing in any other form of now. And you even bind up and rebuke and every liar in wait and decree that they, they missed their plan, they will not be able to perform. They should not come across your path. You will not be misguided and you will not be misled. So you bind up every lie and every form a lie comes in. And even the liar in wait, which is the one the enemy has sent. To trap you or to snare you or to mislead you or to misguide you or to get you, excuse me, to go the way the Lord has not called you to go. Uh, so I always pray that. But definitely uh, I pray that way and I put it in that list, uh, not only in obedience, but even requests. Because you know, I was already being urged to do it and I was getting so many requests. And I start chopping off the first part of the messages so that you could just hear the prayers because it is scriptural prayer. It just comes out of me in a natural flow because you don't have to say the scripture verbatim. You can pray the scripture and the more you do it, the more you will just flow from scripture to scripture and you have applied principle in your prayer. And the angels hearken unto that word. And you must know that. And according to the words you pray, let the angels of God be. I'm going to get right into this next message, beloved. Uh, share this message. Start to circulate it. That uh, By the time I really get into it, other people can hear this word. But even then, you can always share it. Again, I told you, do the work of an evangelist because there are people who will see this word that would never see it unless you shared it. So you will get that, that abounds towards your account. I'm still going to do a short video. Don't let me forget. Where you can evangelize just with a thumbs up. Why? It's not that I need your likes. I, it's the way the system is set up. When you thumb it up, it puts it in the feed. And every time somebody thumbs it up, it puts it in the feed. So more people are allowed to see it. So you can be evangelizing just with a thumb up. But I would suggest and ask and request that you share it as well. Don't be stingy with the meals of the Lord. Because if you're stingy with the uh, uh, taught meals of the Lord, how that tells me that you're going to be stingy with the things that the Lord gives you personally. That can be a stopper. Let me get right into this message, beloved. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for your patience. Uh, and like I said, I'm not putting date and times on these anymore because the Lord has me load them up so ran randomly. Because I, I mean, it's proof of that. I, wrote, I loaded up a message that was over two years old that I have recorded and it was an old time word for who heard it and will always be that way with the Lord uh, and to the best of my ability because nobody moves in perfection to the best of my ability to move as the Lord would have me move and to lower as he would have me load and that is my prayer to always be in his perfect timing uh, I'm sure I've loaded stuff out of order sometime but that's just part of growing and the Lord he allows for that but you, you grow thereby okay when he does it show you anything that you've done, be quick to repent, and you'll continue to grow. It won't always be that way. That's just part that's the growing process. That you learn to hear him better by yielding uh in obedience to his voice. Okay, this message I'm gonna have fun with. But it is a serious word. Because it's a warning. Because many of you will be judged by your own ignorant judgment. Ignorance is not a defense. 
That's why he says judge not unless you be judged. What does that mean? If you're doing the same thing they're doing, then you can't point at them. But it's certain scripture, okay? That'll be like, some would be like, okay, that'd be like, okay, they cheat on their spouse. I wouldn't do that. Okay? But there's certain things in the Bible that this don't apply to because everybody is doing it in some way. And this is what I'm about to minister to you. In some way, you fall under this. So therefore, you just pray for people rather than attack them. Because what I'm about to teach you, all of us do regularly, which is why we have to continually repent. That's what it means to judge, not let you be judged. If you're doing it, it don't matter if you call on somebody else hip hip hypocritical because they're doing one thing and you hypocritical in another area, that's still hypocrisy. You go to the church and go to the club in the same hills. But they said they were going to do something and didn't do it. Hypocrisy. They go to church, but they're shacking up and not married. Hypocrisy. Now, how many of you know that this person may not have went to the club and then to the, 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 on the uh, in the pulpit in the same hills on the same night, but they were shacking and they're still both, y'all both in hypocrisy. So therefore, you can't judge them. You condemning them for not fasting and you ain't fasted in a year. Hypocrisy. Our safe fence is you told somebody you was going to do something in your heart, you knew you never get to do it. But they're listening to gossip and, and praising Jesus. Y'all both in hypocrisy. You gotta watch it. Okay? He said for us the Lord. Prepare your, prepare your hearts. Because many of you are about to be judged by your own ignorant judgment. For the Lord tells us to judge a righteous judgment. But it must be righteous. I told you that many people hate judgment. When judgment it's judging, they hate judging, and judging is what keeps the great judgment off of you. If you judge the things you do from day to day, first in yourself, he said after you have accomplished in yourself, then you judge others. Okay? And the judgment of right and, the judging of right and wrong keeps the great judgment of the overflowing cup of the Lord from spilling out on you. You can rise up and judge things and stop pestilence and stop plague and stop the wrath of the Lord by executing righteous judgment. Calling evil, evil. Calling wicked, wicked. Calling people wrong, wrong. Calling them out on their sin. Not letting them stay in it will keep the judgment away. And that's the great judgment of the overflow in the cup. Because they keep doing it, they keep sinning, they keep sinning, they keep... Eventually the cup overflows and the judgment of the Lord hits. When judging the behavior now will keep that from happening. Okay? We must move in wisdom. Beloved, this message, it is a word and a warning. The name of this message is vanity. The food of fools. You will be judged by your own ignorant judgment. Ignorant judgment. Ignorant judgment. Because the very words you judge them with have it become yours. Ignorant judgment is what you're about to be judged by. Again, word of warning, vanity. The food of fools. Because a lot of people are like, Lord said don't call nobody no food. No, he said don't call no brother in food. Because I can take you in the scripture where he says, Thou food. Thou food. How is it that you say, they're talking about the, that anybody who touches the bread is, you know, is cursed. And he said, what sanctified the bread? The altar is all on the bread. But they didn't really worry about who defiled the altar. But if you defiled this bread on this altar, See how backwards that is? It's the altar that sanctified the bread. But you're in trouble if you eat that bread. You're in trouble if you defile that bread. That's about how we are. Let's get to this word. Vanity, the food of food. So many of y'all think it's all about looks. How do I know? Just Google vanity on YouTube. It's all about makeup and hair. Has nothing to do with it. I love it. Because the Lord be like, while you pointing, his, his finger is this. But most of us can't hear the Holy Spirit. That it is, the food of fools. So let's go, because trust me, y'all, this page, this message is three pages long, but if I had put all the stuff in here about vanity, it would have been a long, long part one, part two, part three, part four messages. But y'all going to get the point by the time I finish. Vanity is the food of fools, and y'all worried about the looks while you judge everybody. Now, if somebody's in love with their looks, that's all. That's when they're in vanity, not the fact that they fix themselves up. Let me keep going.
If that's all you think about, you spend all your time doing, everything you do is about your looks, your hair, your nails, you can't take care of your family, you can't take care of your house, everything's about that you, me, 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 you say it opera, you so full of yourself, that, that, that might be vanity, that might be vanity, this kind of vanity, because vanity is so big, let me get into this word, Ecclesiastes 1 and 14, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, and I'm going to show you, all is vanity, not just the scripture, all is vanity, and vexation of spirit. You are being vexed of spirit, but most people call, how, what they think of me? Who ain't talking to me? Why can't we have what they have? I got to work so hard to do this. I don't get those sleep. What are these kids getting them under? Everything is vexation, and it's all vanity, okay? In fact, I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. I have seen all the works which have been done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity, a futile grasping and chasing after the wind. Everything in this world is vanity, which is why you need to be chasing the things of the Lord. Let's go to the next verse. Sowing iniquity and reaping vanity. When you sow iniquity, since y'all think it's just about looks, when you sow iniquity, this is a repetitive way of sin. You will reap vanity. Catch this. If vanity is just looks, how if you sow Iniquity, you read, you gonna read vanity. What you gonna? Let me some fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. This is just how I think. Cause if, if vanity was just looks, and he telling you that if you sow iniquity, you gonna read vanity. Everybody be so fine, and nobody would be able to live with themselves. So is that what vanity means? He said if you sow iniquity, you read vanity. And if, if vanity was just looks, everybody be so pretty, nobody would go to work. <laughs> Come up, y'all. This is funny to me because I watch people persecute people all the time just for fixing themselves up. And it'll be some of the humblest people. They just comb their up and they step up. It's funny people never want to meet. Well, give you to shut off their back and, and ain't worried about it. They just fix themselves up to carry themselves well because we ain't broke down, busted, and disgusted in Christ. Okay? He said, sowing iniquity, you will reap vanity. Proverbs 28 and 8. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity. And the rod of his anger shall fail. Okay? This is probably, I'm going to read it in King James. Oh, this is Job 4 and 8. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity, you are working iniquity, and sword wickedness, sword wickedness, reap the same. Okay? And that's vanity. Okay? Let's go to Psalms 4 and 2. O ye sons of men, how long will ye, uh, uh, how long Will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. Okay. Another scripture. Vanity of words. Okay. It just looks right. Hmm? It's just not combing. It's just makeup. It's just prepping. If that's all that woman thinks of and that's what she's lifting high, then in her life, that is vanity. Not just the fact that she got up and combed her hair and made her face up. That's not vanity. If that's what she holds over all things, that's what he means by let, the, let it not be your hour to dawn. Let the beauty that people see be truly the beauty that is of your heart. If the hour is all you got, that's vanity. Okay? Psalms 4 and 2. O ye sons of men, how long will you re -glory, re turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek out this leasing? Okay, vanity of words. 2 Peter 2 and 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lure. When they speak great swelling words, these are boasters, big talkers. Huh? These are the, these are the channels y'all flock to. I saw somebody make a, a video about a runaway duck, and it had 5.2 million hits in, hold on, two days. So that's why I won't be no excuse to nobody didn't hear the word. You see all the time they gave to that dumb video in the vanity? 5.2 million hits in two days. A cute little video somebody made about a duck running away with a backpack on his back. They got time for that. Okay? Okay, let me go back to the word. For when they speak great swelling words, they are lured through the lust of the flesh. You are lured through the lust of the flesh when you speak great swelling words. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped. From them who live in error. Words of vanity. You allure. The lust of the flesh. 
So your great puffed up words, you are lured unless of the flesh. What does this mean? Your great big talk, you, you draw them through the lust in their flesh. They may like her. You got big words about that. The ministry, you got, you got great big swelling boasting words. So you draw them through what's in their flesh. Vanity of words. Vanity, vanity. All is vanity. Okay? Majoring in the minors. What meaneth this? That means when you sit in an organ over whether somebody had a, a celebrated Christmas or not. That is majoring on the minors. That is not the things that the Lord is concerned with. What day they go to worship when we supposed to be worshiping him, worshiping him seven days a week? Whether they eat meat or not, and what kind of meat they eat, majoring on the minors, and you will stand before the Lord on this. We go to beat this in the head, we're going to beat it in the head to the white meat show, basically. Okay? All you're doing on your own, not led specifically by the voice of God, is vanity. All you do today, led specifically by him, is vanity. Okay? Living by the preceding word. We must live from day to day, moment to moment, by the destructive word of God. If you go your own way, even in gas, and don't you know, even when you go out and just enjoy a day in the park with your family, that's vanity? That's why you need to watch how harsh you talk concerning this thing. Okay? Vanity of words. Going along with the crowd. This is Ephesians 4, 17 through 18. Going along with the crowd is vanity. Okay? This, and what do y'all see now? Why do you think everybody out in the street marching? They're just going along with the crowds. And if you ain't out there, they think that you, you contrary. Let me, let me go. This is, this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord. They that ye henceforth walk, walk not as the other Gentiles walk. Don't walk as the other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Don't walk. They're walking in the vanity of their mind. That means they're walking in their mind. They're walking in the flesh. They're walking their own way. They're doing their own thing. That is the vanity of their mind. Having their under why? Having their understanding darkened. Because if you walk in the way like they're walking with your vanity in your mind, your understanding will become darkened. Being alienated from God. So if you walk as they walk in the vanity of their mind, you will first have your understanding darkened. Being alienated in their mind through the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. Because of the blindness of their heart. So what did this tell you? They're walking in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from God through the ignorance that is in them, and it's because of the blindness of their heart. Their heart is blind. Okay? Let me see. Have the other okay, because of the blindness of their heart. I'm going to read this in the uh, message version. Same one. And so I insist, and God backs me up on this, that there be no going along with the crowd. No going along with the crowd. The empty-headed, mindless crowds. They've refused for so long to deal with God. They've refused so long to deal with God that they've lost touch. Not only with God, but with reality itself. They are not. People just think everything just fine. They can't even see what's coming. I'm looking around. People are clueless. They're going to be clueless. Not only are people going to be clueless to how far along we are. Clueless to the new world order that is well set up. Clueless to the things that's going to happen to the banks. Clueless to the things that's about to manifest on this earth. The creatures that they think don't exist that's going to manifest. This is why men's heart are going to fail them for fear. When they see some of this stuff that they just thought was fairy tales, their heart going to fail. Literally. This is what this means. Let me keep going. Okay? Example of uh, the plain woman and the made up woman. Okay? Mm. I put that there for a reason. I'm going to come back to that. Sometime I'll type these messages. I know I must have wrote that there for a reason. But either way it goes. You can have a woman who gets up every day and she makes herself up. She makes sure she looks nice and she cleans. So she, if she has to answer the door, if she has to go to the grocery store. She gets up, she cleans, she cooks for her husband with a smile, with joy. She takes care of her kids with love. She prays. She reaches out to the poor. She's kind to her neighbor, neighbors. She prays for other people selflessly. She gets up in the middle of the night even when she's tired and prays for hours upon hours crying out for other people. 
and she does it every day without complaint. But then you got the woman who is plain. She keep a bun on her head and a wrap and no makeup and a skirt to her ankle and, and she probably got coveralls underneath and some bloomers. But she rude. Can't no man tell her what to do. Jesus is the only one that called me. Kids can handle it themselves. They despise their kids and their husband. Don't speak to nobody. Happen to walk past a neighbor who got a skirt on his two knees and she shoves her. Who do you think is righteous? Who do you think is moving in vanity? Observe, beloved. David, man after God's own heart. Why was he a man after God's own heart? He did all, David did everything he could be imaginable, okay? David stole another man's wife. He sent that man out there that was so loyal to him that when he had slept with him, he tried to trick him. That man was out there warring for David. When he brought it, he, he saw his wife because he was at home peeping instead of out there working. Took that woman in there, got her pregnant. So to try to cover it, this is what he tried to, y'all don't understand, that's why he called for the husband so he could go in there and sleep with his wife. He called him back from the war so he could go in there and sleep with his wife in a close enough amount of time so he could think the baby was his. But the man was so loyal, he wouldn't even go sleep with his own wife. The baby was like, why are you still man on the steps? He said, how can I go sleep with my wife when I got men out there in the field? I ain't going into the house and sleeping with my wife till this is done. So David had to send that man back out in the field so he could be killed to hide the fact that he slept with his wife and got her pregnant. Then he ended up marrying. I got to name a whole lot of stuff David did. We know that. But let me tell you why David was a man after God's own heart. There's it's two reasons why this. He chased the Lord. He wooed the Lord. He literally made the Lord want to run and say, what David going to say about me today? He wooed him with his praise. It was sincere praise. Because if it wasn't sincere, it would have worked. He fall out and repent quickly. But the words that he used to exalt the Lord made the Lord, you know, you get up, what is he going to say about me today? I don't listen to how he talk about me. He praised me so good. That's one of the reasons. You better learn to fall out principle and learn to praise him well. Okay? Because David did. Catch this. This is really why. But he did those things too. Because David did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Now, he did all this other stuff. But he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And turned not aside. That means he didn't turn from nothing. Anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only one, save only one in the matter of Uriah, Uriah the Hittite. I got to remember what he didn't do. It was one thing out of, because you imagine your whole life, and David lived to be old, only one thing that you turned aside from, only one thing you didn't do that he asked you to do. Only one thing that you stopped doing that he asked you to do. That's why David was a man after his own heart. Okay? Definition of vanity. Vanity from the word vanitas, from vanus, vain, emptiness. It, it means emptiness. It means want of substance to satisfy. It has no substance. You know stuff that has no substance, it's vanity. It can't satisfy you. Uncertainty is vanity. Insanity. Vanity of vanity, said the preacher, all is vanities. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 1. Fruitless desire. You got a desire, you toil it over here because you want to you wanna live like the house of the LA and the Orange County women. And you know, you want to do it's bad. You, you want to you chase them vainly uh, things that don't amount to nothing. Fruitless desire. Fruitless endeavor is vanity. Vanity possessed. Vanity possessed. Possessing. Many who are desirous to know the certainty of things to come. Those who want to know point by point everything that's coming. The Lord is never going to tell you everything. Because usually your fear will cause it to be altered. You will speak against it. You will go in fear. You will cause the doubt which will alter what he has planned. Trifling. This is literally what the definition means. Trifling labor that produces no good. Emptiness. Untruth. Vanity, which means you lie. Vanity, empty pleasure. You do a thing that just make you feel good. Ain't none of it fitting the things of the Lord. That's why I say even when you just relaxing by the pool, even though the Lord wants you to do that, that's vanity. Empty pleasure, which is why you ain't supposed to spend all your time doing it. Empty pleasure, vain pursuit, idle, idle show, unsubstantial enjoyment, vanity, Os ostentation, arrogance. Vanity, inflammation of your mind, pride in any form, vanity, okay? 
empty pride inspired by overweening conceit of one's personal attainments. That means if you're proud of what you've accomplished, vanity, or decorations, trophies you got, awards you might have won in track or whatever, vanity. Okay? Let me keep going. Sin with vanity had filled the works of men. Think not when woman's uh, transient breath is fled that all her vanities at once are dead. Six, oh, this was a little poem thing I found. Think not when a woman's transcendent breath, transient breath is fled that all her vanities at once are dead. Succeeding vanities she, she still regards. Vanity is the food of fools. No man sympathizes. With the sorrow of vanity. He said no man's regard. That was the end of that there. But vanity is the food of fools. No man sympathizes with the sorrows of vanity. Vanity is the food of fools. No man sympathizes with the sorrow of vanity. Your vain. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your vanity. Okay. If you always think somebody talking about you. You are vain. That is vanity. If you think every word of correction is about you. You are vain. That is vanity. If somebody even whispered to somebody else in the room, they ain't no one near you and don't know you. You think they're talking about you. That is vanity. You are vain. And they say you're so vain, you probably think this message is about you. Don't you. Don't you. <laughs> and some people that have been thinking this message is about them. And that's proof of what I'm talking about, okay? Those who speak vanity are false. Psalms 144 and 8. Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is right. Okay. Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and, this is comma, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That means they shake hands with you, they reach out, and their heart is not sincere. That's vanity. Okay. Say one thing and mean another. Vanity. Okay. Grace note. So women simply wear, I already told you that. So women who simply wear a little makeup is not vanity. Yet if she is proud. Conceited, arrogant, selfish, and focused on her outward beauty all the time. That's vanity. Those who speak vanity are false. I already read that, okay? 144. Whose mouth speak deceit. This, uh, this is an amplified version. Whose mouth speak deceit without restraint. You speak deceit and you ain't got no restraint. And whose right hand is uh, a right hand of falsehood. So only a couple words changed there. Okay, grace nuggets. An unrestrained mouth. You just say anything, even if it's right, and you speak it with the wrong motives, and at the wrong time, it is vanity. You hear me? That's a forward mouth. That's an unrestrained mouth. Even if you speak what's right, if you speak it with the wrong motives, if you speak it at the wrong time, it is vanity. What did I tell you? That a fool speaks, a, a, a wise man speaks because he has something to say. That means it's appointed. It is, this is the right word in due season. But a fool speaks because he just has to say something. They just can't shut their mouth. A wise man speaks because he has something to say. It's relevant. But a fool speaks because he just has to say something. It's gibberish. Vanity. Do you know the difference between a bold mouth and a forward mouth? I already told you. Well, no, I didn't. I, 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 I didn't live that message. And I ain't loaded it up yet. Oh, my God. It's going to. Yeah. Okay. Vanity short list. You are arrogant. Speaking of yourself, speaking out of timing, speaking contrary to the word of God, idle words, which means you just yap, 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 yap about everything. You just talk, 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 talk. Vanity. Your car, your house, your things, you spend too much time and you think of him, even those things are vanity. Even though he gives them to us, they vanity, which is why you are not to love them. Doing what the Lord hasn't instructed, vanity. Self-will task and pursuit of money. Vanity. Speaking just anything, anytime. Vanity. Concerned with how others serve God. Vanity. Concerned that they do what you do. Vanity. Going along with the gang. Vanity. Okay? Speech causes many to sin. Speech causes many to sin. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 6. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Suffer not thy mouth. To cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hand? Just humble yourself. Okay? I'm going to do it in the Amplified Version. Do not allow your speech to cause you to, cause you to sin. And do not say before the messenger, hello, the messenger, the priest of God, that it was a mistake. 
Why should God be angry because of your voice? Why should he be angry because of your voice, your words, and destroy the work of your hands? So don't say nothing. Okay? General, general, genera, generational, uh, generational vanity. That's what I meant. Generational. Vanity and vain heads. Okay? Joined by 2 verse 5. Thus said the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me? That they are gone forth from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain. That means they're chasing after stuff. Because everything you got without the Lord is vanity. Everything. This life without vanity. Even living without him. Vanity. Even the stuff he gave you is vanity. That's why it should not be placed above him. Psalms 144 verse 4. Man is like to vanity. Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Your very life is vanity. So before you start pointing at people because they got makeup on saying bang, 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 that woman may just be doing her makeup and she not bang. People who love it and lift it up and that's all they spend their time on, they are falling into vanity. But even putting your makeup on is bang. Getting up out of the bed is vanity. Cooking breakfast is vanity. This is why you have to watch this. Jonah 2 verse 8. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. You observe lying vanities because vanities is a lie. And if that's what you spend all your time on, you observe it. You forsake your own mercy because you spend your time thinking about your hair, thinking about your makeup, thinking about your car, thinking about your clothes, thinking about your kids, thinking about your vacation, thinking about your job, thinking about that goal, thinking about that car you want, thinking about that dress you saw on the window. You observing it all day, you forsake your own mercy. Even though there's things we're going to have. Okay? Couple that with the scripture below. Romans 1.25. Who changed the truth of God. You know, read this whole Romans, okay? Romans 1, read all of it. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature, that means every creation, more than the creator, who is blessed forever. You are observing a lying vanity. A lying, or shall I say, uh, observing lying vanity, you forsake your own mercy. Okay? How do you stay out of vanity, just as I told you here, David, a man after God's own heart. I read that first King, uh, verse 15 and 5, because David did that which was right in the sight, uh, eyes of the Lord. That's how you stay away from vanity and stand in the grace of the Lord and in his sight. David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Do what's right in the eyes of the Lord and turn not aside, turn not aside from anything that he commanded. Don't turn aside from what the Lord told you to do or what his words command. He, he turned not aside from what the Lord commanded him all the days of his life. Except one thing, stay with the Lord. Okay? Titus 1 12 through 14, rebuke those who are trying to get you contrary and moving contrary sharply. Okay? One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said that the Christians are always liars. They are liars, they are evil beasts. So you see anybody like this? Liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. That means slow to obey, slow to move in the things of the Lord. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. Anybody you see like this, rebuke them sharply. And I ain't talking about upward. I'm not going to keep preaching on order, y'all. But you, you brothers and sisters, y'all correct one another. One another. That they may be sound in the faith. Why? Because it makes them sound in the faith. Not, and, and it makes them sound in the faith. And it makes them not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. This is how you end up taking heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men. Stuff that they make up. The way they want to teach the word. This is true for me. This is how I feel. So this is what they teach. And you give heed because they turn from the truth and you end up following. Okay? Sharpness according to the power. We know that's 2 Corinthians 13 and 10. Therefore I write these things being absent. Lest being present I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to your destruction. When people are sharp with you, when they move by the spirit rightly, that's to your edification. That's why everybody can't do it. Okay? Only by sound doctrine will you grow. Titus 1 and 19. Hold fast. Sound. I'm going to tell you what sound means. Hold fast to the faith. Hold fast the faithful word as he has been taught. That he may be able by sound doctrine. Both to exhort and to convince the gangsters. What sound? To be free from moral defect. To be thorough. 
to exercise and show good judgment, to reflect a sound weight in argument and be evidence of, to be deep and to be complete, to be in good condition, free from defect or damage or decay. So to be sound in the doctrine is to be free from all defect, to be a thorough, to exercise and show good judgment, to reflect and be a sound weight in argument and evidence of God, to be deep. To be complete in him. To be in good condition. To be free from the defect. To be free from damage. And free from decay. The internet has got people ignorant when it comes to rank. And that for sure is vanity. So what you spend your time taking in. Okay. What you spend your time taking in is what you're eating. That's why I said vanity is the food of fools. If you spend all day watching TV, all day playing video games, all day shopping, all day just tuning to your body, your head. I ain't talking about a day when you take care of your body. You got to keep your body up, slough the dead skin off your feet and take care of your toes. That's not what I mean. This is all you do. Washing your car. Constantly people at the window because every time a car drives back, you think somebody touches your car. And then my bird fly over you look out the window because you think somebody, you think they're going to drop one of your car. Vanity is the food of fools. The Lord has given us, the earth is the Lord in the food of the and he has given it unto you. For even David said, I would have fainted had I not a uh, hope to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He gave you the clothes. He gave you the car. He gave you the hair. He gave you the makeup. He gave you the things to uh, cause you to enjoy your portion here. But when you start to look at it over him, all of it is vanity. So if all you eating is the things of the world, and when I say the things of the world, I'm not talking about doing the things of the world. You, your car, your house, your clothes, that's all you're thinking about. Your trips and all those other things, that is your, that's what you're eating. Watching that kind of stuff on TV, watching those kind of shows and the kind of things people are uh, uh, teaching this way. You know, t looking at, that's why I told you the video I saw that was about a duck running away. And then I saw one with two half-fleshed, you know, young, I would just get a switch. And all they was doing is saying, hey, the two girls bump hips. How many hips? 7.2 million in two days? Food of fools. YouTube is full of fools. Full of fools. Food. Vanity is the food of fools. This is a warning. Quit judging people because they make themselves up. But that person may make themselves up and be the most humble person you've ever seen. Simply because they comb their hair and they dress nice do not mean that it's vanity. Even though all is vanity. Because I, I really cut this short, y'all. Because there was a lot of scriptures I could have put in here concerning this. This is a word of warning. Vanity is the food of fools. So stay off these foolish channels. You will be, this is the warning. Because you will be judged by your own ignorant judging. Because when you're in hypocrisy, everything you're judging them for will be the judgment that hits you. So please behave, pray for one another, and pray not to tend too much to the things of the world, because this is vanity. All of it is vanity. All of it is vanity. It is smoke in the wind. We're supposed to be tending to the things of the Lord. So stop judging people simply for doing their hair and makeup. Vanity is much more vast than that. Stay off the food of fools. These crazy videos, crazy channels, crazy TV shows, food of foods. It does not mean we can't enjoy ourselves and look at movies and different things. But that should not be all we be doing if you belong to the Lord. That's the world we're living. Quit judging people for combing their hair. When you buffing your car all day. Vanity. Beloved, grace be with you. I love you all. So into the good ground of preach be a voice not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart, for God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. The word of God. First Corinthians 9:11 reads, "If we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account." We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. 
Radio.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice, not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.